Hi, welcome back. I wanted to talk to you about New Year's resolutions as a leader. See, I did ask in various Facebook groups, people from all kinds of professions, what their New Year's resolutions were as a leader. And as you would expect, the answers were quite wide ranging. But they had one thing in common. They all focused on me. How can I become a better leader? What tools can I learn so I become more productive or effective? And I thought that's odd. Because the very definition of leadership is that it's about other people, right? And so here we sit as leaders and we focus on ourselves when, frankly, we should focus on that other person. So in this video, what I want to do is take the focus a little bit away from ourselves and ask, what can we do for other people, specifically those who we lead? And how I'm going to do that? I will look at the three things that annoyed me most in my previous leaders. Don't worry, won't call out any names, but if we avoid those three things, we have a pretty good starting point for New Year's resolutions. Let's do it. I have a dream, that's all I need. I'll make it happen with some work and belief. The first thing I really hated was any sort of micromanagement. Somebody coming along telling me exactly the steps that I should take for a certain job to do. Listen, we got hired for a job. We already know how to do the job. We don't need you to tell me how exactly to do it. Okay, there are instances where that isn't the case, where you need to adopt a coaching approach to leadership, where you have to explain things to them. But that is very different from micromanagement. In the first instance, you show them the job, you show them how you do it, and then you let them try out different things, different approaches to find their own style. With micromanagement, you tell them exactly how you want things to be done. And frankly, it's very counterproductive. And it also takes a lot of motivation out of your people. So if you don't micromanage, you trust your employees. Now, again, don't take it the wrong way. It's not a blind trust. It's not just letting people get on with things, but it's trusting that their approach to a certain task will yield the results. And when you put the trust in your employees, they will pay you back with even harder work, with more productivity, and sometimes with an approach to a task that you couldn't think of. By the way, I'm a big believer that we also need to integrate the different pieces in our lives. So last week, I released a video on making New Year's resolutions for the year 2021 in a little bit broader context. So if you haven't watched that, then go after this video to my page, subscribe if you haven't yet, and you can watch that as well. Now, second thing that I really hated is a little bit the opposite of what we just talked about, and that is a lack of direction, where you just tell people, we trust you, just get on with things. Because what your employees, what your staff also wants is they want to have a sense of purpose. They want to know how their specific task falls into the broader context of the organization or even just the goals and the direction of your department. And if you can't do that, again, you're taking out a lot of motivation from your staff. So a lack of direction is something that we need to avoid. What can we do instead? To create a vision for your organization, for your department, and then explain to every single person how their personal contribution fits into the broader picture. And you also make sure that you tailor the job to the specific strengths of that person. That way, not only everyone pulls into the same direction, but they also pull with the utmost strengths that they have because you've assigned them tasks that they enjoy doing and that they are really capable of doing. The third thing that I noticed in some managers, even very good managers who give you a sense of purpose, who are not micromanaging you, who trust you, is that they are still a bit unmotivational. And that is because they don't celebrate successes. And if you as a manager start to celebrate successes, it gives that motivational boost that we all need at times. And don't say, I can't do that because I'm sitting at home and I'm working from home. You can have a celebratory meeting on Zoom. Yes, you can 
you know, get a glass of champagne out. Maybe you even go to the post office and ship a glass of champagne to every one of your employees to celebrate a certain project being completed or whatever it is that you do. But keep celebrating as a leader. It's a great New Year's resolution. It helps your people not only to stay motivated, but also to see the more human, the more personal side in you. When you trust in your people, when you create a vision that they can identify themselves with, and when you keep celebrating the successes that you achieve together, then despite all the things that might go on around us, you will grow closer to your team. And frankly, if you ask me as a leader, that's one of the greatest achievements that you can have. My name is Kai de Gleifert. Maybe I see you over in the other video about New Year's resolutions. And if not, then surely in the next video that is dropped here on the channel. For that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you like the content, then also drop me a like. It really helps the algorithm. Wish you a very prosperous new year. I'll see you very soon.